I really love this, this um, analogy I always keep in mind in subduing our bad qualities. So once upon a time, a father wanted to teach his 18-year-old son, Jason, a lesson on taming the tongue. Why? Because all throughout Jason's life, he was always the most popular kid. He was a straight-A student, and he was the star athlete on his basketball team. Consequently, Jason became very proud by thinking, I can say anything to anyone and get away with this. But his father warned him. He says, my dear Jason, it doesn't matter how powerful we are or how powerful we think we are. We can always be humbled by Almighty God. But like most teenagers, Jason did not listen to his, his father. But circumstances would eventually humble him the hard way, like for most of us. Indeed, during Jason's freshman, sophomore, and junior year in high school, he always made the basketball team. But during his senior year in high school, he got cut from the team. Why? Because his best friend, Eric, told him that the new basketball coach for his senior year was the father of one of the students he bullied all throughout high school. <laughs> so, so the moral of the story is, is that just as criminals who escape from prison will cause problems for all of human society. So when our bad qualities escape from us through our words and our actions, they cause problems for us and potentially for others, right? So how does the government subdue criminals? With security guards, right? So it's described that a wise person subdues pride with humility, envy with appreciation, and vengeance with forgiveness. So whatever bad quality we have, we're meant to subdue it by the good qualities. That's what the Bhagavatam describes. We're meant to cultivate all these good qualities. Why? To subdue our bad qualities. So therefore, there's a saying, as long as a word remains unspoken, you are its master. Once you utter it, you are its slave. And so there's a um, one I also like to quote often, and I like to hear these things because we have to remind ourselves of this. So there's one that says, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. So Vaimana Krishna Pada Ada Vinda Yorva Chamsi Vaikunta Gunanarvana Ne. This is a famous verse by um, Ambarish Maharaj. And he says, Savai Mana, Mana Krishna. When I think of Krishna, what's the domino effect? I speak about Krishna. And what's the domino effect of speaking about Krishna? We act in Krishna consciousness. And so therefore, we should be very careful of what we're thinking because they lead to words, words lead to actions, etc. It leads to our, our destiny. And on the other hand, when we think, um, you could say, negative thoughts, then what's the result? Pranashati. The Gita, this is a very famous verse from the, um, chapter 2, verse 62 through 63. It says, while contemplating the objects of the senses. And what is that? Nadanam Najanam, I want more followers than others. So what happens if somebody gets more followers than you, more subscribers than you, more likes than you, more retweets? So we're actually conditioned in this age to put ourselves above others. So what happens when somebody gets more followers? You're contemplating the objects of the senses, even if it's a subtle object. And what is that subtle object? Fame. So what happens when other people get more fame than you? Then the Gita says, Krodha, anger arises from anger, delusion. From delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, we do things that we'll very much regret, actually. So, so that's the conclusion that we should be very mindful of what we're thinking.